Hey what's up everybody, thank you for checking this video. If you want to see more, please leave a like and subscribe. But even if you don't, enjoy and happy coding! This episode is brought to you by SkySilk. If you're looking for a free Linux-based VPS in the cloud, go to skysilk.com. No strings attached. Just awesome stuff. Welcome to another tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look on how to quickly generate a template in order to build our testimonial slideshow or the slider, whatever you want to call it. Basically, it's the last thing that we need to build in order to complete this custom testimonial section. Let's access our testimonial controller.php file and here we can duplicate this line to generate a shortcode in order to deal with the testimonial slideshow which is the unique name we define in our custom post type testimonial settings. So let's update this to say testimonial slideshow and here let's create this method by duplicating this testimonial form method. We can duplicate everything paste it right here at the bottom and let's create one line of space and here let's replace everything with a different name so instead of calling the form we can call the slider or the slideshow whatever you want to call it so here I'm gonna replace pretty much every time I say form I'm gonna replace it with slider but the name of the method is actually slideshow just to match the name of the shortcode that we define and here we can replace this to remove just the contact prefix is just slider.php file. I'm doing this because also in this case, like in the same case of the contact form, we're gonna have some custom styling and some custom JavaScript for our slider. And the JavaScript especially is gonna be really interesting because we're gonna generate, we're gonna create a slideshow with vanilla JavaScript with some cool ES6 methods without using any external plugin or third-party libraries, jQuery or other heavy stuff. Everything is gonna be vanilla. Vanilla JavaScript, really cool to look at. But yeah, before continuing building the slider page, let's generate these two files that we currently don't have. So if we access our sidebar here, let's generate these two files inside our source folder. So first, let's create a new file called slider.js and inside the slider.js we can write just a little placeholder like don't trigger the slider if the document is not ready so it's not loaded so let's write the usual document dot add an event listener and the event listener is the usual dom all uppercase content loaded with camel case and then comma a nameless function that carries the event and here we can pass the curly brackets and inside here something is gonna happen I don't know what but something's gonna happen for sure and it's gonna be awesome but now we have our slider.js so let's do exactly the same for the SESS inside here let's create our slider.scss uh, we don't have any styling to define now so let's just leave this file empty now what we have to do we have to update our gulp file.js in order to take care in order to handle these two new files that we generated because the gulp file doesn't automatically create separate files for all our sources we need to specify what we want it to do so here we have our style src or source that is tapping my style.scss and then the style front that is tapping the form and we have also this JS front that is tapping the form JS uh, let's change these names just to be more eloquent and more obvious in the declaration of this variable so every time we call it this front this actually should be related to the form because all this styling is just the form so let's replace everything style form JS form JS form and here when we're using the multiple styles also the style form Perfect. Now let's duplicate the style form and let's say style slider, something like that. And let's replace the to tap the slider.scss file that we just created. And let's do the same for the JavaScript JS slider. And let's tap the slider.js here. Let's align this properly. Let's add this to the array of JS slider. Perfect. And then we need to add these the style slider to the array of this gulp src perfect 
Now we are tapping the two new files that we just created. So if we open once again the sidebar and we scroll all the way up to the assets folder, here we have of course the different files, the form and the my script and my style. These are the things that I'm using in the backend and these are the assets files that I'm calling for the form. Now if we open our terminal and we are located in the base directory of our plugin and we run gulp watch, after the gulp watch is compiled, two new files or actually four new files should appear and there you go, you have it. The slider.css with the map and the slider.js with the map itself, which is fantastic. Now we can safely continue. Let's keep the sidebar open and if we scroll down in the templates area, let's generate a new file that is the PHP template that I'm calling in order to generate the slider. And here we can, just as an example, just print an H1 call a slider, something like that. So we're gonna see if this slider is actually enqueued properly. In the testimonial controller, we are doing it with a require once and we're printing the style and the JavaScript. So the only thing that we have to do now, we have to access our WordPress installation. And in the backend, we need to generate a new page called uh, testimonial, we can call it like that. And here we can print the shortcode for our testimonial. So if we access the testimonial custom post type, we have a section called the shortcodes that we generated. We can copy the testimonial slideshow shortcode, paste it here, publish this page, click on view page, and there you go. Now we have this beautiful H1 with our slider that it's what we're printing. And inside above the slider, we have the slider.css and the slider.js. Fantastic. Now it's time to do a little bit of PHP with the WP query in order to get all the testimonials or those testimonials that we have saved in our custom post type that were approved and featured by the, an admin. So if we access back our administration area and we click on testimonials, throughout the series of these tutorials, I created and attested the generation of the testimonial, the submission of the testimonials through the contact form in the front end of that specific page. If you're following this tutorial along, probably you have the same setup with a bunch of fake testimonials and some just gibberish text, which is perfect. The thing that I did, I accessed a bunch of them, four in total, and I clicked approved and featured in order to allow me to tap those and know which one I wanna print in the testimonial. I don't wanna print them all, I just wanna print those that are approved and those that are featured. So if you access one of them, you can just check the approved and future and update, and then we're gonna have a situation similar to mine. If we access back our testimonial page, now we can style the slider.php file. So let's go back in our code editor, and in the slider.php file, it's actually really, really simple. So let's delete this thing, and let's open the PHP tag and leave it open. We don't need to close it because they were not printing any HTML for now. And here basically we're gonna use the almighty WP query, which is fantastic and does everything that we need to in order to print our testimonials. So first let's write our usual arguments array in order to specify what we wanna get from the WP query. And the first parameter is the post type. We just want the testimonial post type. We don't want all the posts or pages or anything else, just a testimonial. We wanna be sure that the post status of this testimonial is set to publish. And then we wanna limit the amount of posts by specifying posts, it's plural, remember. A lot of you wrote me a comment in previous videos where I used this method called like post per page, is posts, be sure to write it properly and be careful of typos, so posts per underscore page. We want just five, let's say, just to not have a massive slideshow that loads everything, it's gonna be massive. And now because we're storing those meta keys, meta values approved and featured inside one single serialized meta key, we need to do a little bit of weird magic here. So first, we can specify in WordPress in order to tap a meta key value with a specific relationship, we can specify a meta query. So the meta query is gonna tell the WP query to match all those testimonial post types that have these exact specification in the meta query that I'm gonna specify now. So if we open an array in the meta query, we can 
tap another array. So the meta query has a double array because we can have multiple meta queries running at the same time. So this is a multidimensional array. We need to specify a second array, so a subarray inside here. The first attribute is the key, which key we want to tap. And the key is the one that we have declared in the testimonial controller when we were saving our custom meta option and get post meta, this is the key, the Alicat testimonial key. So we can copy this to be sure to not write typo. Then the value, and here it gets complicated. Let's leave it just like that for now. And we can say that this value needs to be compared something like a like. So something that it's similar to that, but it's not identical. So the thing that I'm doing here, and this is gonna sound kind of weird, like usually the meta query, how you write this thing, and this is like a hypothetical example, is that if you have a meta key called futured, you say that the futured should be equal to through or one, depending on how you're storing your value in your database, and the comparison should be equal. Or if it's equal, you can also avoid the compare. So. This should be the way to do it. But the problem is that in our database, and if we access our database here and we check the Alicat testimonial key, you notice that in order to avoid to repeat one, two, three, and four meta key per post, we're storing everything inside one single meta key and the meta value that is this one is serialized. Unfortunately, right now, as of today, of the day of this recording, WordPress doesn't allow a direct access, a direct sorting of posts by a serialized meta value. Cannot access that, is not straightforward, like if it was a simple array, it's just a serialized value, so there's no way to just write everything in a single query. There's a workaround, or there are a couple of workarounds. The first one, you could just simply avoid the meta query and get all the testimonials and then in your post loop you should you could check if the meta query future is set to through and print it otherwise skip the post but that means that we're gonna grab five posts that probably a bunch of them are not featured so we're gonna have less posts in the loop and I don't want to do that the other way of doing it, it's actually kind of sketchy and it involves the use of like and it involves the use of writing the actual text of all of these, everything that we want. So if we copy what we want, we want the string approved to be equal to the integer one and the string featured to be equal to the integer one as well. So if we copy these and we paste it here, we're saying basically to WordPress, check in the meta query with the key value, the meta key, Alicat testimonial key, if there's a text that it's like this value that I'm putting here. So if the meta value in our database has something similar to this portion of text. This is not the best, <laughs> this is not the great solution. It's kind of heavy, especially because we are searching through a text search. We're not using an integer, we're not using a direct value, it's just a string. We're using a string which is kinda heavy on a database. The thing that allows me to be okay with this method is the fact that the testimonial is just like a unique section that we are handling, it's not something that the user can handle, we're just handling everything by ourselves. We have a really limited amount of posts that we're printing, we're not printing 30, 50, or 60 posts all together, just five, and uh, this is not the worst. WordPress allows this method through the like, which I guess it's okay. <laughs> I know it's not the best, but it works. If you have a different method, a different approach, definitely let me know in the comment below. Write me what you would use in this situation, what would you suggest, and hopefully if in the future, if you're watching this video and WordPress version six is out, probably this limitation has been solved. And now with the WP query, we can uh, query directly a serialized meta value inside a custom meta key, which would be awesome. But for now, we can continue with this. Perfect, now that we have our full list of arguments of everything that we need to use, we can uh, declare a new variable called query, and the query taps the new WP underscore query class. And inside the class, we need to pass the list of arguments that we wanna use, perfect. Now we can check if the dollar query have posts, column, 
let's heckle just the list of titles and content for now and then in the next lesson we're gonna style the slider for now just like print an echo ul and then close this ul with another echo right at the end and here we can close the end if inside these two ul we can say while we're still in php the query the WP query class or the new instance of the WP query class have posts. So while we have this post, we can call the post. So we're saying to WordPress, use this query, don't use the default one, don't use the default post loop, just use this one. And then here, and while, just to close the loop. And inside the loop here, we can simply echo some uh, list, concatenated, get the title and then we can concatenate a p tag get the content and then we can close of course the list tag and semicolon at the end perfect this is something really really simple and we're just like looping through all the posts that we grabbed thanks to the wp query and we're printing the title and the content in an order list so Let's check if it actually worked. Let's go back in our testimonial page, refresh, and there you go. Now we have the titles of the four testimonials that I approved. So testimonial from me, then from Jack, another and test. Testimonial from me, from Jack, another and test with all the content that we have here. Perfect. And we can double check if the actual meta query works if we just simply, for example, update the testimonial from Alessandro Castellani. So let's edit this. We can say, this is not featured anymore. Update, go back in the testimonial section, refresh. And now we have just the three testimonials that are both approved and featured. Fantastic. And of course, let's always remember to reset the post data with WP reset underscore post data to avoid issues with future queries or something that the user could have in the footer or after we activate the slider. So it's pretty much it for this video. In the next one, we're going to actually use this PHP data to build the slider and create everything with vanilla JavaScript. Thank you guys for watching and I talk to you in the next one.